Hello and welcome back to La Cancha. And we finally had the winners of the Champions League and it was none other than Liverpool. No, Real Madrid. <laughs> Yay! Yay, mm. and, 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 to, and to celebrate Real Madrid's title, we brought on resident Real Madrid fan. Not Tapiwa this time, unfortunately. He's somewhere in a ditch celebrating in Vancouver, but Varad is coming in his place. So, Varad, how did Hello. Real Madrid win this? Uh, actually, this whole Champions League campaign, not just Champions League campaign, but the whole season, it kind of was a tipsy-turvy because no one expected Ancelotti to do this. Okay, It was supposed to be a transition season where Ancelotti would take care of it for one season. That was the expectation. And it, it, just, it was a roller coaster. It just went on and on. It escalated. During the mid-season too, if you look at the uh, go back and observe all Madrid fans' reactions, most of them, we were not we will we to be honest. La Liga was quite in hand, but Champions League it escalated post round of 16. Yeah, and I mean, did, you, did you expect this at no, any point? Did you expect no, Real Madrid no, to win it? No. 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 Even after the first leg of uh, round of 16 against PSG, no. It was so, totally unexpected. So when did you actually believe? Is it after the final whistle against Liverpool? That's what I think. Like, oh, uh, wow. The Chelsea game, Chelsea game, mm. Chelsea game. Yeah. We started the, the Chelsea game. The first leg we started believing. Yeah. And what do you say about people who call who have called Real Madrid lucky throughout this campaign? Uh, look, yes, it, it, it's a bit of luck. Okay, of course, you look at the games. Uh, PSG dominated us. Yes, Chelsea second leg, first half, they completely dominated us. The thing was, when you do it again and again, match after match, leg after leg, tie after tie, I mean, there's a bit of mentality, Real Madrid mentality that comes into effect. You can't call that, call that luck because you look at yeah. those players, Benzema, Modric, Carvajal, all these players have got tremendous experience with them. They know how to turn around these games. Yeah, and, and that's what makes them so special. Yeah, it's kind of there. Build that skill, build that mentality. When you come into Madrid, you play for those years, 8, 10, 12 years. And kind of, you know, people will call it lucky, but it's actually not luck. It's actually yeah. the skill mentality they have developed for years and years. Yeah, because they do this all the time. It, not just this season, but I remember against Bayern Munich in 2018 when Kelo Navas yeah, had an absolute blind. You look at those, uh, the, what do you say, golden phase of Real Madrid Champions League. We made semifinals till 2013 season. But from the 13-14 season, I mean, you look at the mentality, you look at those players. I mean, yeah. it was actually, what do you say, uh, those past five years before 2013, those past five years, it actually built in. We actually developed. We actually, you, say, you look at Cristiano, you look at Modric, you look at Ramos, Marcelo. They actually honed that Real Madrid mentality into that team. I'll bring and on think, Oscar. Uh, uh, Carlo yeah, Ancelotti so. too. Uh, like he he knows what Madrid uh, embodies, you know, and he actually took care of the season very well. I mean, yeah. without answer, I don't think so. Any other manager, like uh, except Zidane, would be able to recover <laughs> or be able yeah. to achieve this this season. Yeah, because Zidane, he was in the final, and I'm sure he must have been like, you know what, this is my team. I I sort of did the work. I did the groundwork to allow this yeah. to succeed. Because let's not forget, they were in the semifinals last season. Yeah. yeah, this is one thing which people forget. Yes, we had a trophyless season last uh, last time. But we actually made the semi-finals. And yeah. we were playing good in the Champions League also. Yeah. I mean, the game against and Liverpool, we actually outplayed them. Yes, and they were like just a pass away from La Liga. But yeah, Varad, I'm just bringing... Like Stamford Bridge last season was kind of like... You, you get to know like, yeah, Real Madrid had so many gaps. Yeah. I'm going to bring in Oscar for a bit because, Oscar, let's talk about this from the other side of the El Clasico rivalry because you are a Barcelona fan. And when you look at Real Madrid and you look at 
these epic comebacks, what do you think Barcelona lacks? Because you get the feeling that if they're in that situation, Barcelona don't come back. Oscar? Well, while we wait for him, I, I yeah. just think, yeah. yeah, so what does Barcelona lack in these kind of games yes. that Madrid um, do so well? Yeah, I feel like if I'm to make a comparison, Barcelona are kind of like a flower. Like at their best, it's beautiful to see, but then there's a bit of like fragility where it's like, when we when things don't go our way, it's like we don't react well enough because we're not used to things going our way to an extent. Because yeah. we've been very, very dominant and it's been a very good blessing to be dominant since the early 2000s. And, you know, those kind of periods don't always come for everybody. So you have to enjoy it while you can. But I also feel like a good point Varad made was that you know, the years where Real Madrid were always close, but they didn't get there. Those years of failure, in quotes, some people would call them. Those years actually built this mentality up. And now it's like second nature to them. Wherein that, yeah. the, anytime they're, you push Real Madrid to the edge of a cliff and they find a way to stay balanced and then push you off. So I feel yeah. like yeah, we're in the situation where we might be developing that mentality now because compared to... Valverde's last season and Setien, under Kuman a bit under Xavi, I see some, a bit of, re I see more resilience from us. So, hopefully, these years, these like barren years, can be a good lesson for us. Like yeah. it was for so, good. Yeah. So let's get back to the game. And uh -huh. before the game, like I, I think you, you called the wrong the victory. I called the Liverpool victory by one goes mm -hmm. to zero. So, but it was the other way around. And mm -hmm. in the game, in the first 40 minutes, it looked like it was Liverpool that were going to get the job done. And how big were Real Madrid and Thibaut Courtois in those 40 minutes? Because he kept them in the game, if we're being honest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, about the luck thing, I've seen a lot of people say Real Madrid are luck. Like, you can't do the same thing five times and say it's luck. It's part of them. And... Also, depending on Courtois, who is the best goalkeeper in the world this season, it's not luck. You're just depending on your best talent in that position, right? Yeah. So I feel like, yeah, that is not like luck is part of it, obviously. Every good team has an element of luck because football is a sport where it can go either way. Yeah. But yeah, Liverpool, they had their chances in the first half and dominated. But if you don't kill this Real Madrid team, they are going to kill you with their first shot. I, like, <laughs> I've said this on this pod so many times, and I've watched Real Madrid a lot this season. I always count. If the opponent has five chances and they don't finish them, Real Madrid will score their first or second, and that's what happened again. That Vinicius yeah. shot was their first leg legal yeah. shot of the game. So, yeah, it's pretty much how Real Madrid do it. They are what, what did you call? What did you call Kotswai in our chat, in our group chat? I, I've called him a bastard. I've called him a devil. I've called him a demon. I've called him a god. I, I have, I've run out of for the guy. He's incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, if you look at uh, Kotua's, uh, uh, what do you say? Yeah. It, in Spain, uh, I remember in the, I think it was 12 13 Copa del Rey final, Mourinho's last game as Madrid's yeah. manager. We, we lost it. Uh, we lost the Copa del Rey final at the Santiago Bernabeu. Uh, yeah, you remember one thing, I think it was the extra time where yeah, he yeah. the light on his head. Oh, yeah, run. that's true. And, and yeah, he was and magnificent in that game. Now. I mean, uh, yeah. at first, even I was skeptical, like, come on, it's an Atletico player. You can't love him like, as soon as he gets to Madrid. But then uh, this season actually uh, won over all Real Madrid community, to be honest. And not just Real yeah. Madrid, the whole footballing community. Yeah, like he's he's been outstanding this season. He saved 15 expected goals for Real Madrid, which is incredible. And like the way I've seen this analyzed is people talk about this as like, oh, this was like Kutwa made a brilliant performance, but he's not normally like that. They're like, oh, like it's the best. But he's done this a lot all season. 
Yeah. Like, yes, his Champions League final, and he made some really good saves. That Mane won and Salah at the end. But he's, I think he should be in the conversation for the Ballon d'Or in terms of top five, at least. Yeah, yeah because I think uh, any other goalkeeper in recent times has been so influential uh, in the whole campaign, like Ortua yeah. was this. So, yeah. No, Oscar, you're about to say something? Yeah. I was going to say, like, I feel like overall Benzema has been Real Madrid's best player, but for the Champions League in the knockout stages, I feel Courtois is head and shoulders the best player for Real Madrid in terms of the Champions League alone because yeah. he did his job to a T so many times and was able to keep Real Madrid alive when the defense couldn't make the blocks or do anything and kept them alive enough for, you know, them to say, okay, guys, let's wake up and do what we have to do in attack. Like, the guy is incredible. I haven't seen a game of him in the last 18 months where he has had less than an 8 out of 10 performance. Yeah. And, and I wanted to change topic a, a bit from Patois. Let's talk about that Bermuda triangle, Bruce, Modric, and Casemiro. A lot was said about them. I've been very critical about Bruce throughout the season, but those three played amazing in the final especially Casemiro. He, he did a lot of things close the lines that meant Liverpool couldn't generate as much danger as they do against other teams. Yeah. I feel like they, like they took a while to get going, especially Modric. But like you said, Casemiro was excellent when he had to be, especially in the second half, he was really immense. Cruz and Modric, while a lot of people wouldn't really notice what they did, I was able to see what they were able to do on the ball and off the ball to help Real Madrid in that game. And they really, they, all of them really played their hearts out. That's the biggest compliment you can give to them and everyone that wore a white shirt on Saturday. Yeah, and Varad, like, I, I always see Real Madrid fans saying, oh, we have to get rid of those three, like, we have to replace them. Do you think they stay um, on for another season? Do you think they have one, extra legs? Yes, yes. Uh, at least one season more. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, can someone like... Casemiro, I think he's going to stay on like at least three to four years more. Yeah. He, he had his on and off this season, to be honest. He was not actually at his best this season. He had his on and off games. But I think when it mattered the most, Casemiro did his job. The job he was sent out to do on the pitch. Yeah, he was fantastic. Also, Valverde was there. There's so many players who were heroes throughout this campaign. But Valverde, he he made the run. He gave the assist. He made Robertson's life hell. <laughs> and he's not he's not a right winger, but like that was an amazing run. He and Cavan but they also had really good games. Yeah. I, I think at the best Valverde and Carvajal make a combination of those beasts, you know, the bulls in Real Madrid. That yeah. when they are at the best, they charge on. They just charge on. They don't think about too much. They don't think. Uh, they don't think too much. They just charge on. Yeah. yeah. And, and what about the ghost? Say, oh, sorry. Yeah, I was going to say like a lot of people have given Carvajal a lot of stick this season, and I haven't liked that because they just picked on him because Mbappe gave me hell in the first leg of that PSG game, and like Mbappe would do that to anybody, so. I don't get why Carval is being seen as a weak link when this guy, since Ra without Ramos, Carval is the one person in the back line that reminds me of him, like in terms of having that monster mentality. Yeah. Even if he's you're not warrior. playing well. Yeah, he's a warrior. The guy, he has been so unlucky with injuries. And to be honest, to see him actually complete a final for once, I was quite happy to see that on a human level. And even in that Manchester City game, he gave the final for us, and it was delicious for us for the Rodrigo goal. In yeah. the goal against Liverpool, he confuses Van Dijk because Van Dijk is not sure of where to go because exactly. Carvalho is making the overlapping run, and he yeah. that's how Valverde is able to get that pass. Yeah. So, yeah, like, and he gets I, a lot of stick. Yeah, and the way that move was constructed, it's like you could tell that it was, it was going to end in a goal or at least a shot on target because oh, yeah. he and Valverde worked that so well. And we haven't even yeah. talked about how Carvajal locked up Luis Diaz and he, Luis yeah. Diaz in his pocket. Yeah, and Luis Diaz was, I think it was a danger. Money was, for me, Liverpool's best 
sacks defensively. Yeah. Right? But Luis Diaz was always a danger. And I'm, I'm sure we'll get onto Liverpool's tactics later, but I think taking off Luis Diaz for Jota was a mistake, like, in my opinion. But before we talk about Liverpool, Vinicius, like, he's another hero. He's another hero who Varad, a lot of Real Madrid fans, they were starting to lose their patience with him. And this season, he, he changed remarkably. I think he's possibly the second or third or fourth best player in Champions League. Yes, I mean, uh, Vinicius, uh, uh, this season actually turned it around, you know. Last season, till last season, many of the fans were frustrated, to be honest. Like, Vinicius always lacked that final touch or something or the uh, Like, he was aesthetic. He, he had that yeah. Brazilian flair, but again, he lacked that uh, influential touch, influential last touch. But this season, I think he's matured a lot. I think he got a lot of help from Benzema also this season. But yeah, yeah he's transferred himself, to be honest. And I think he will be able to lead as a front runner from a year or two from here. When Benzema is in his late stages of his career, I think Vinicius is ready to take the charge. And, and no doubt Benzema is still in the Ballon d'Or. So, there's no question, right? No question. Yeah. question. Like uh, he's, he, might have, he might have had a quiet final. Yeah. No, unless and until France football does something again. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's French. I, I think the, the one's good. He might have had a quiet fine, but he was so influential in that game. Like, I know Courtois gave Real Madrid the platform to make those amazing comebacks, but like Benzema had to put the ball in the back of nets, like a hat trick against uh, PSG, he scored three against, uh, I think, he scored four against Chelsea. He scored yeah. two against, or two or one against, uh, two against, three against City as well. So, yeah, three against City. Yeah, and it's the top scorer of the, of the competition scoring 15, which is really impressive for his numbers. And for a guy who Michael Richards said, he's not as good as Harry Kane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just want to say like, something. Uh, I bet Benzema doesn't even watch Harry Kane play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oscar, you want to say something? Yeah. Like, Vin, Vin, Vinny's growth this season has been a big difference in Real Madrid going from semi-finalist to champions and from second place to first place as compared to last season. I have yeah. noticed something. It's not just the fact that his finishing is better. His movement into the right positions is completely on a different level because to get more goals, you just have to be in the right position. That's the truth of the matter. And his game sense, his IQ all went up this season. And I feel... I don't know who exactly to credit, but I say Ancelotti deserves a lot of praise for putting his faith in Vinicius. And Vinicius yep. deserves a lot of praise for making that left flank his own because we always had the question of who is going to partner Benzema on either side. Now, the question became who is going to be the right winger because Vinicius made that spot his own and he's making a name for himself in Real Madrid history. Yeah, that's true. And, and I'll say one thing is that a lot of people on Twitter, whenever young players are coming through, they're always like, oh, why doesn't this young player break through? And, and we've seen it with Vinicius, with Pedri, with Gavi at Barcelona. But with Vinicius, for example, like he made himself undroppable. And that's something you have to do as a young player breaking into a squad because uh -huh. there's no reason why a coach whose job's on the line to give you space just for the case, just for the sake of like, giving you playing time. You have to make yourself a play well. That's what he's done. And now it's, like you said, it's a question of who's going to partner Vinicius and Benzema. And I'm sure with Mbappe not coming, maybe Real Madrid are slightly happy that Vinicius has had this growth. And the way the way Ghost said past Trent and Alexander Arnold was brilliant. Because I'm sure he positioned himself right and he was just able to ghost past him. And that's that's showing his football IQ has gone up tremendously since he's come to Real Madrid. Yeah. Indeed. Should we move on to talk about Liverpool? Yeah, let's talk about Liverpool. Yeah, and one of the best performances performance for Liverpool, I, I'll say two players, Konate and Mane. Yeah. They were two of the outstanding players. Like, they could have won the final by themselves. Konate, he did a good job against Benzema and Benicia. So he really kept them quiet for long spells of the game. Yeah. The thing is that... Konate is going to feel really bad because this is his first defeat as a Liverpool player. Wow. 
yeah so i'm like i i remember that start time like if anyone is going to be the first person to take him down it's going to be real madrid because it's a spanish team versus a non-spanish team in the final what else is going to happen <laughs> yeah but yeah i agree he was brilliant like he has always been i feel like if he continues like this he's going to be a very good player money as well Mane and Diaz were really good, but then Diaz started to fade the way into Carvalho's pocket, but Mane tried to stay active. But still, there's only so much you can do when you're facing the giraffe in goal. Oh, and Salah didn't get his revenge that he promised yeah. that everyone was going to get. Yeah. yeah, I was really disappointed with Salah, honestly. I, I was watching his game with my brothers, and they were laughing at how timid he was in the first half because he, he didn't show any intends to try and go past Mendy like I know Mendy yeah. is difficult to go past but at least try Salah like the personality that he, Liverpool needed from him he didn't deliver on that and I felt that was disappointing now, what's changed from Mo Salah because in the first half of the season it was amazing people were like he's going to win the Ballon d'Or and he was generally possibly the best player in the world at that point but in the second half he's, he's fallen off yeah, I feel Afcon losing Afcon the way he did kind of hurt him, and he just hasn't been able to recover from that. He's still been pretty good, but like the levels of the first half of his season, there's a clear difference, like you've said. Yeah, and was do you think like I think bringing taking up Ruiz Diaz was a mistake for Jota personally, but it seems like you don't share that opinion. Uh, I felt like Luis Diaz was losing effectiveness and he, he he wasn't actually as electric as he was against, say, Villarreal or other teams. And Jota, when Jota came on, Jota actually made some good movements and created a couple of opportunities or half chances. So, I, I honestly, if any of the players Liverpool had to play right side, I would have said take off Salah because he was by far the least effective. Yeah, he got yeah. some shots, but they were all straight as Courtois. And where, where does Liverpool go from there? Because they were close to the Premier League. They lost that in the final day. In the Champions League, they tried, they huffed and puffed, but they couldn't get past the giraffe. Is this yeah, a success? I mean, Is this a failure for them? I think lots of divided opinions on this. I feel like it's not a failure because winning the Champions League isn't easy. They've gotten to three finals in the space of five years. Is it like that's incredible in and of itself? So they just have to keep doing the same thing. As for the Premier League, they're up against Pep Guardiola. So I can't blame them for finishing with like something points and getting second because in another against any other coach, they probably would be winning more trophies than they have already. Yeah, and I heard a stat that they've only lost, they've only lost four games, including the Champions League, which is incredible. Yeah, that's, that's mad, honestly. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, you're talking about, like, high standards. But I'll take, I'll take a picture away from Liverpool, and I'll go back to Real Madrid, because I'll talk about the fact that Real Madrid, they've won five Champions Leagues in eight years, or five Champions Leagues in nine seasons, depending on how you want to spin it. Mm-hmm. That's insane, right? Yeah. Yeah, like you're, you're you uh, must be living in the I mean, uh, if you look at it, it's actually you know, I mean, yeah, yeah, some five, ten years from now, when you look back at this period, one of the best periods of any club, uh, football club in the history because. All those finals also, okay, finals, the guy, they have faced big teams or anything. Look at 13-14, this Bayern. Uh, Atletico in the final again. 16-17 season was actually quite difficult, to be honest. They had faced Atletico in the semis, Bayern in the quarters. I mean, the whole five years, five years, in 18, 18, 19 season, but they recovered it from recovered again very quickly. 
not in the league but in the champions league they recovered quickly and i think it's down to the experience which all these guys have gained the last 10 years and in this competition they just know how to win to be honest like there's no actually formula or something is they we just know that they have that mentality in them to just turn around those games and which one is the most special out of the five that you've seen cuz it, it's funny that Real Madrid have won five in nine years cuz they went 12 years searching for the elusive la decima but which one is the most which one would you keep in your heart like are you going to tell your children like i for me personally uh, i think yeah for me personally the 1670 in the duodecima and the la liga season and this season yeah will rank it, it in the look... top two seasons of the last nine years because i think wow. 17 was a perfect season you know it was perfect in all i mean you look at cristiano cristiano was at his goal scoring peak benzema assisted him yes benzema was not that effective in front of the goal but still he created the chances he had that magic in him you look at modric cruz and casemiro i think it's the best season it's 2016-17 season uh, the, yeah. those three played i think it was the best season yeah you had ramos yeah. and marcelo at their peaks i think 16-17 goes down as one of the best seasons in real madrid yeah and and there were also had lots of comebacks in that like the season as well like i would go on record and say yeah, 16 yeah. 17 like, yeah, you had, uh, yeah. You had like Barca, i'll just say uh, el clasico at camp nou where ramos scored the equalizer yeah and it was the you game had against Real deportivo Betis at bernabeu you had uh, deportivo la coruña where yeah i just think that squad was so perfect also, like the cristiano scored the third yeah I mean I, I, I think that that was the phase where all these experience came into effect you know and that's what carried on because Vinicius yeah. and all when they came uh, into the Real Madrid's radar th- these were the seasons yeah. where they watched where they experienced like yeah this is Real Madrid and this is yeah. where we are going to go so sure. and I think that sure. shaped the next for five years of real madrid yes 1819 season was very uncharacteristic of real madrid to be honest yeah but still if you look at it recover quickly yeah they did they did and i'm just going to bring oscar back into the conversation cuz this might be a jibe don't take it bad me oscar but right now so many real madrid players have as many champions league titles as barcelona <laughs> because of this run i mean I mean that's not going to be the case forever so it's not yeah something to worry about in my opinion but how, how magnificent has it been like just even let's take it let's take spanish football as well to have this period where like if you include barcelona that's six champions league titles in nine years for la liga and then when you talk about the europa league sevilla atletico Villarreal, that's six in nine as well in the europa league Mm-hmm. It, it must be crazy and people still doubt the strength of the league yeah. I mean the English media will always put down everyone else to try and lift up their league but yeah the facts are different everyone to see yeah you are right it's like the facts is there for everyone to see that Spanish football has done really well and I think we'll look back on these years as being golden years for Spanish football and even the fact that like in the year when la liga spent the least in the since the pandemics compared to all other leagues la liga has come back and it's won in the champions league again yeah yeah but yeah, enough floating uh, yeah in those years also not just the yeah. champions but we had uh, i think two all spanish finals we had in uh, i think four semi final you had barca atletico final semi final in 15 16 so if you look at it spanish teams had performed all over those years not just in winning the trophies but in key knockout stages also you had so many all spanish uh, uh, ties you know yeah yeah and let's not forget like this season 
Villarreal yeah, yeah, also got to the semifinals. Atletico were very good against City and they maybe should have got to the semifinals as well. And this was a year when I believe Lota Mateo said that like Spanish teams have no hope in the Champions League. So for me, as a fan of Spanish football, proud fan of it, like I, I feel this has been one of the best campaigns I've witnessed <laughs> in my life following it. But yeah, enough gloating. Let's move to La Segunda, where there was some football after the Champions League. And they had, they had plenty of drama, right, Oscar? Like we were all thinking about Amadi, yeah. and they were going. They were meant to seal it last week. Will they one day? It seemed like they were going to bottle it, but the Segunda has been magical. So it's nice to say. Yeah, it's been a hell of a season, the Segunda, and you know some teams they thought they were going to get promoted on the last day. Some teams almost threw away promotion. And that's what you love about it. Like, it stays unpredictable to the bitter end. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I was, I was watching the Almeria game, and it was crazy because they I was like, they're going to go out, they're going to go out, they're going to go out. And then Abar scores, and the change of mentality from the Almeria players and the Leganes players, because Almeria, they were like, throwing the kitchen sink at it, and they were mm-hmm. trying to score. Then when they heard that Abar conceded the goal, they, they started defending really deep, wasting time, and... It was like a change of script. <laughs> it was fine yeah, to watch. It, yeah, it, it's like all the go- the goal zone was just incredible. Get, seeing how <laughs> everyone was just reacting to different news. I, I mean, personally, I don't think it's the right thing to let the players know what's going on in other games because you might just make them panic instead of motivate them. Yeah, yeah. Because at that point, I was like, if I'm out Maria, you have to go for the third goal to kill it, right? And then the players are like, uh, should I go for the third goal? Should I just concede and keep what we have? And if it's 2 2, and let's say A bar equalized, they wouldn't have been promoted. But yeah, you're right. It's, it's interesting that psychology that goes into telling players what's going on in other grounds. Yeah. And are you happy with the two we have? I'm happy with Almeria, definitely. River, the way that I'm more, I'm kind of okay with it. Uh, why, but, why, why do you hate Ronaldo? I, here's the thing. I feel like you just want to see some new teams, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of the same old, um, you know, yo-yo clubs. No disrespect, <laughs> but like, yeah. you know, sometimes the league needs something new, like challenge everyone, like a team that just yeah. come in and make a difference, and then push other teams that are just comfortable and mutable to be like, you know what? If we don't improve. These guys will overtake us. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's also good to see Real Valde back because we can see how much Ronaldo wants to take them to another level instead of just battling it out to stay up. Maybe they can become a more consistent team. And sure. compared to Abar, they definitely have the finances for that, I think. Yeah. And it seems like Pacheta is a good coach. Like he's certain things around there. They definitely play more. Offensive football, he was good at West End. Like, we really liked him at West End when he was there. So, yeah, I'm good. excited for that. But for that, Varad, any opinions? Are you happy with Almeria being in La Liga next season? Um, yeah, actually, I was, uh, uh, I checked the scores uh, in half time and I was like, okay, Almeria, there's a chance that Almeria don't qualify right now. <laughs> but then, yeah. I think I'm okay with Valladolid, but uh, I would have preferred Ibar over Valladolid. Valladolid. And that, that, they that just bring us... the culture back in La Liga. Yeah. Yeah, you have those. Ibar has that story, right? The small club, small town story. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's a good aesthetic for La Liga. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think and... overall, it's been a good second. I mean, others. I would have preferred uh, Real Oviedo over Girona uh, in the playoffs. Yeah, same, same. That that, but, that brings yeah, us to the like, question. Let's see. So, what's your order of preference for the playoffs, everyone? I, I want Las Palmas or Tenerife before the other two. Before but the other two. Anyone but Girona. <laughs> yeah, I think I think in this podcast, we're Girona's biggest hate club, so... They blocked me on Twitter. They're the only club that has blocked me on Twitter. 
<laughs> yeah. Varad, what's your order of preference? First, uh, last five months, then I buy them. I don't consider Girona as my preference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say the same as Varad, like Terry Ray, Las Palmas, and then what well, then Avar. I, I would like Tenerife because, like, I, I don't think I've seen them in the Primera like recently. Like, all, yeah. Last time was like 10 years, 12 years ago. Las Palmas, I would also like because they have Pimimenta and they play some good stuff. They also have uh, Oscar's favorite player, Jonathan Vieira. What's the cool about him? <laughs> yeah, so. And Lemos, let's not forget Lemos. And Lemos, yeah. <laughs> Jonathan Vieira, who's like Iago Aspas of uh, Las Palmas, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, and so we're pretty, we're pretty, I, I guess we're pretty, we're in the same mind about it. So we'll talk about this when, eventually when it finishes. I'll say finally, there's been some transfer news that we have to speak about. Diego Carlos leaving Sevilla for Aston Villa, which is, it's a big blow for Sevilla, isn't it? Yeah, but I feel like, you know, it's a player that they spent, they got for very little and they've, Tell for a lot, so I guess it's a win for them. Yeah, they just need to invest that fund really wisely because he's going to be a difficult player to replace. Yeah, and next season, the biggest strength they're spying with center backs it's going to be gone because they sold Carlos. We know they're going to sell Kunde to Chelsea. It's just about a matter of time. How how do you think Lopsegi recuperates for that? Do you think he has to change his style of play, or do you feel they can recruit the adequate personnel so they don't really miss Kunde and Carlos too much. I feel like he can do a bit of both, honestly. Yeah. Like, because with 100 plus million for two of them, you can really like shake up the squad a lot. So I feel like a bit of both, there's room for a bit of both. Yeah, and Varad, do you have any opinions on it? Yeah, I, I think it will be a big blow, but uh, um, they will recover from it. I don't think uh, it will affect them so much. Yes, in the big games, it may kind of turn it against them, but uh, still, uh, Sevilla will recruit at least one defender, which will be which will replace the effect of uh, Kunde and uh, Diego Carlos leaving. Yeah. Yeah, and with that, that's all we have for this week. Thanks, Varad, for coming on, and thanks for giving your opinion and a Real Madrid point of view. And I hope you're still partying till the end of next week because it's been a remarkable achievement <laughs> for Real Madrid. Yeah, and Oscar, as usual, thank you yeah, for coming yeah. on. No problem. See you next yeah. time. Yeah, see you next time. So we'll be recording again once we know the third La Liga team. But for now, congrats to Real Madrid fans, and hope you have a lovely summer. Barca fans and the rest of the league will try to ignore the realm of your celebrations. Have a good one. Adios, guys. Thanks.